Hello, and welcome to History with Jackson. Today, we are on our penultimate episode of the Pope's series, and today we are looking at St. Gregory I. As usual, we will look at who he was, what he did, his path to the papacy, what happened in his papacy, and if he was a good Pope or not. But before we jump in today's episode, just want to say around half of you aren't subscribed to my content, my pages and so on. So if you are watching this and you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and that like button as well if you're enjoying my content. And without further ado, let's jump into the episode. So Pope Gregory was born as Gregory in around 540 to a wealthy, noble Roman family. Gregory's father, Gordon, was a prefect of the city of Rome. Gregory's family had a very strong religious connection. His aunts were all nuns and he had two direct relations who were popes, Pope Felix III and Pope Argapitus I. Despite this strong connection to the church, young Gregory sought to emulate his father's political career and he went on to become prefect of Rome at the age of 33. In this role, Gregory was renowned for his administrative skills, and this was something that would transfer over to his career in the clergy. After the death of Gregory's father, Gordon, in 674, Gregory retired from politics and turned the family estates and villas into Benedictine monasteries, and he entered the monastery and became a monk. Gregory would spend three years living in the monastery, and he would claim that these three years were the happiest and best three years of his life. However, the church were keen to use his skills, and after three years in the monastery, he was called up by Pope Benedict I to be a deacon for the church. In this role as deacon, Gregory would oversee the churches in his area of Rome. He would also be responsible for caring for the poor. However, after one year in this role, Pope Benedict died and his successor, Pope Pelagius II, called on Gregory to be a papal ambassador to Constantinople. Gregory did not enjoy his life in Constantinople. He did not get on with Greek life and Greek language, but he did enjoy a close relationship with two emperors. After his stint in Constantinople, Pope Pelagius II recalled Gregory to become his personal advisor. In this role as personal advisor, he would also return to living in his monastery and would spend five years living there. In around 589 to 590, Rome would be affected by floods, plagues and famine. And Pope Pelagius II would come down with the plague and later die. The church then elected Gregory to be the new Pope. He reluctantly accepted this position and he became the first monk to be elected Pope. Gregory initially found that the role of Pope was not that different to his former role as Prefect of Rome. He decided to deal with the issues that were affecting Rome, and immediately, using church funds, imported grain to help feed the people. Gregory also had to act as a temporal leader throughout this period. He had to organise and pay for armies to protect central Italy from the Lombardy Dukes. He also paid off these Dukes to prevent any invasion and organised and negotiated treaties between himself, central Italy and the Lombards. This defence of central Italy laid the foundations for what would later be known as the Papal States. Gregory also used his administrative skills to reform the church. He enforced celibacy upon the clergy 
and removed lay officials and replaced them with monks. Gregory realised the importance of the church's vast land holdings across Europe and improved the management of these estates to increase the church's revenues from them. This increase in revenues allowed the church to properly perform its functions. This was also seen as the beginning of the church's civil service. This civil service was also charged with looking at the church's foreign relations with other governments and other nations. Gregory also attempted to convert Europe to Catholicism. Huge parts of Europe were practicing alternative forms of Christianity or paganism. Gregory was successful in converting Spain when King Ricard converted to Catholicism. Gregory also attempted to convert the Kingdom of the Franks when King Clovis was baptised. However, the Kingdom of the Franks was too disjointed to be converted as a whole, so this was largely unsuccessful. However, Gregory was absolutely obsessed with reconverting England. Gregory wanted to reconvert England to Catholicism and bring it under papal control as they were practicing a more orthodox form of Christianity. In 597, Saint Augustine and a group of missionaries sent by Gregory landed in Kent. They were successful in converting the Kentish kingdom and converted King Ethelbert of Kent. They also established a monastery at Canterbury. Gregory was also renowned for his writing. He wrote on pastoral care which outlined how bishops should live. He also wrote the dialogues which looked at the actions and miracles of the saints and he wrote several essays on the Gospels and the book of Job. Gregory also developed music within the church. He developed Gregorian chants and established a choir school within the Vatican. Was Gregory I a good Pope? Now obviously being called Saint Gregory I or Gregory the Great kind of gives the answer away. And when he died in 604, he was immediately canonised. So contemporary opinion definitely suggests that they thought he was a good Pope. However, as a historian looking back, we can definitely say he was a good Pope. Gregory stood up and provided for and defended the people of Rome when they needed it most. He also ensured financial stability for the church for centuries to come and established a strong civil service that provided for and helped the popes for centuries as well. The only stain on Gregory's reputation is that he set in place the framework for the East-West Schism, or the East-West Split. He had ideas and perpetuated ideas of papal supremacy and clashed with the patriarchs in Constantinople over this. And this laid the groundwork for that split. However, overall, we look at Gregory I and we can see that he was a good Pope. Now, thank you very much for the, watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I'm just going to quickly recommend a couple of books which I used for the research on this. Uh, John Jules Norwich, The Pope's History, is absolutely amazing. The chapter on Gregory I is really in-depth. It covers basically all the bases that you'd want to look at. Uh, it's a very nice, simple, easy to read chapter. So I definitely recommend that. And the link for this book will be in the description below. And second, as always, the biggest book on my shelf, A History of Christianity by Diomed McCulloch. Again, fantastic book. It covers so much history of Christianity. It's unbelievable. So yes, I def definitely recommend both of these books. In the meantime, between this episode and next episode, if you want to keep up with me and all my content, please head to www.historyofjackson.co.uk or follow my social medias, and the links to my social medias will be in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. I uh, enjoy making this content for you. Next week will be the final episode of the Pope series, so I look forward to seeing you guys then. Thank you very much.